In this video, I'm going to be working out an individual integral. I think we're going to take a look at the integral of 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x dx. To start with uh, here, I'm going to take a look at this de denominator, and I'm going to see I've got a 1 plus sine x, which that right there is what's creating my problem. So what I want to try to do is I want to try to manipulate this in such a way that I can get this down to a single entity, not something that is being added or subtracted. All right, so for that reason, then I'm going to choose to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom right there. Then that's going to allow, that's going to give me the difference of two squares, which is going to be a 1 minus sine squared x, which then I'm going to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem to um, do a substitution there. So 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x. And then let's go ahead and show that multiplication there. I'm going to have multiplying by the conjugate 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. Okay, and then the dx. Okay, so simplifying this out here, then I'm going to have the integral. Um, on the top, I'm just going to leave it as 1 minus sine x quantity squared. On the bottom, I know that's the difference of two squares, so square the first one, subtract, square the second quantity, and then dx. All right, and then here comes the substitution, because that right there, if we recall, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So I can solve for cosine squared x simply by subtracting sine squared x from both sides. So cosine squared x would be 1 minus sine squared x, which is what I've got there. So I'm going to make that substitution next. So we'll have the integral, 1 minus sine x quantity squared. Substituting that on the bottom, I'll have a cosine x dx. Okay, so now I have a single entity on the bottom, which is a good thing. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and square what's on the top and then break that up into individual integrals. So let's go ahead and square that first. Um, so it's going to be 1 minus 2 sine x and then plus a sine squared x all on top and then leaving that cosine squared x on the bottom. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to write these as three separate integrals so that we can take a look at what we've got here. Um, let's come down here because I don't think I'm going to have enough room. Let's go integral of, I'm going to do 1 over cosine squared x dx, all right, and then minus the integral. That second one there, I'm going to write it a little bit different so that we see um, what type of substitutions we can do here. So if I do 2 sine x and then throw in an extra times 1 because times 1 isn't going to hurt anything and then separate those cosines so cosine x times cosine x and doing that for a reason so that I see some trig identities that I can substitute there and then plus the integral of sine squared x over cosine squared x dx okay now taking a look at what we've got here 1 over cosine squared, well, that's a secant squared x, all right? Using this sine over cosine, that's going to be a tangent. And 1 over cosine, that's going to give me a secant x. And then sine squared over cosine squared, that's going to give me a tangent squared x. Okay, so utilizing those um, different um, trig identities so that we can now simplify this down, hopefully into something that's going to be a lot easier to integrate here. We'll have the integral of secant squared x dx minus, let's go ahead and pull that 2 out, and then um, let's write that as secant tangent x dx, and then the integral of tangent squared x dx. <clears throat> All right, now these first two are going to integrate very, very simply. All right, and then it looks like we're going to need another Pythagorean identity for this one as well. Okay, so let's see, integrating uh, secant squared x. That one's one you should have memorized. That's a tangent x. And then minus 2 here again, integrating secant tangent. Another one that ought to be memorized. That's just going to be a secant x. Okay, now on this one, all right, taking a look at those Pythagorean um, triples, let's see, we've got um, a tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. So if I were to solve this for the tangent squared x, then I'm going to get a secant squared x minus 1, 
All right, and then that's going to be something that I can integrate a whole lot easier. So I'm going to do that substitution right here for this. I'm going to do that substitution. So then I'll have the integral of secant squared x minus 1 dx. All right, now we're, I think, pretty getting pretty close here. I'm not going to do anything with this tangent x minus 2 secant x plus, all right, integrating that secant squared there is going to give me another tangent x. Integrating the 1 with respect to that dx is just going to give me a minus x. And my integration is all done at that point, so plus c. And then going through, and looks like I've got a couple like terms in there, so I can put those two together for a final answer of 2 tangent x minus 2 secant x minus x plus c. Okay, so um, after you get enough substitutions in there, after you get that first trick of uh, trying to get rid of that uh, sum in the bottom by multiplying by the conjugate, doing some couple replacements there with your Pythagorean identities, and doing lots of substitutions there with your various trig identities, it overall it's really not that bad of an integral. Definitely. Um, thanks for watching. If the videos are um, helping you, don't forget to share with your friends so that they can benefit as well. And also, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks.